You've made it. This is the last one. We've done all of these little videos. We did a course review, objects, loads, free body diagrams, equilibrium, and I have one topic. I went through the whole course and there was only one topic that I couldn't re actually immediately make into an equilibrium problem, and that would be moments of inertia. I'm sure that you could, but really moments of inertia are mostly useful when you get to other classes. They go here because if you're going to be able to do a centroid, which is the integral of x dA over an area, then surely you can actually calculate the integral of x squared dA. This is the moment of inertia about the y-axis. As a note, please note that this is x squared and this is y. So when you're doing these, they're backwards. Remember that what we're talking about here is we're talking about how far off the axis your material is. So if this is my x-axis here, what I want to know is how far is this stuff away from this axis? So as you're doing this, remember that you're always going to square or cube the one perpendicular to the axis. This is also where the parallel axis theorem goes. If your x-axis does not go through the centroid of your shape, then you have to say your value will be the centroidal number plus a d squared. And remember that what we're talking about is two parallel axes, so what would d be? d would be the distance between the two axes. a is just the area of your cross-section. The centroidal moment of inertia, this one is always the smallest value that there is. So anything that you do beyond that is going to be adding on. It is automatically taken care of in the chart, so you don't have to do anything if you're actually going to plug these into some sort of chart. You need to memorize the moments of inertia for the same four I've asked you to do before. Circles, rectangles, right triangles, and semicircles. In general, the centroidal ones are easy except for perhaps 4 over 3 pi. The moment of inertia you simply sort of got to memorize. This is the most important one. 1 12 bh cubed for a rectangle. Cube the one perpendicular to the axis. The circle is the next most important one. That would be 1 quarter pi r to the fourth. Notice that all of these have units of inches to the fourth or meters to the fourth or some sort of length to the fourth. The triangle is a third of the rectangular one. That I'm easy, I have a, no problem remembering that because of the third that comes in the centroid. This is about the centroid for the triangle. I'm not going to suggest that you do anything with a baseline. So you notice I didn't even fill these in on the chart. Go ahead and learn what they are about the centroid, learn the parallel axis theorem, and then apply it as you need to. The only one that you might want to choose to remember about this baseline is the semicircle, because then it's half of the circle, which is kind of convenient. But then you have to say ix about the baseline minus 80 squared to get this, where d is now 4r over 3 pi. So that's sort of your overview about moments of inertia. Remember your chart is essentially just what is the part about the centroid, what is d, what is a, and then you have ix plus ad squared. Add this column, and then you're done. Congratulations, you've made it all the way through this class. I think we've done a great job. I'm very pleased, and we will check in with you at the final exam.